So what is a linear transformation? Keep in mind one thing. So every matrix is associated with a type of function called a linear transformation. That means you can regard a matrix in another way. So instead of just looking at a matrix as a rectangular array, right, you can also associate it with a specific type of function that is called a linear transformation. So what is a linear transformation? Say I've got a matrix A. So here I don't need to mention that it has elements A, I, J. That's implicit if I don't mention it, right? So I'll just remove it. All we need to know is that A is of size n by n. So we can link or associate this matrix A with a function, call it D sub A, that maps Rn to Rm. That is, it takes an n-dimensional vector, column vector, Rn, and outputs an n-dimensional function. So this dA would be a function of vector x of size n, and outputs a times x. And denoting the output as y, for simplicity, we can just expand this multiplication ax to get, so we get the following system of linear equations, right? y1 down to yn, denoting the components of vector y, and x1 down to xn, denoting the components of x. Now, since this linear transformation is a specific type of function ax it has the following property that you can prove easily so say i inputted sx plus ty right where s and t are scalars and x and y are n-dimensional vectors and the output of this is simply stax plus t t a y right you can easily prove that by rewriting this guy as using the property tax is ax. You can write it as a into sx plus ty. You can distribute a using the, the addition property. You get asx plus ty. Now, since s is a scalar, you can pull it outside. Same thing goes for t. You get sax plus ty. Now, ax using the definition is TAX, right? So TAX and AY is just TAY, right? And there you go. Now a rather well-known but possibly straightforward example of linear transformations is so-called rotation. So what is a rotation? It simply arises by, say I've got a two-dimensional space, right? The white point over here has a distance from the origin D and an angle with respect to the horizontal axis, an angle of alpha, right? So in polar coordinates, I can express x and y as d cosine alpha and y by d sine alpha, right? So we can, you know, simply rotate this point, say till here, by just preserving the distance from the origin and doing a simple rotation. Given that, so this is d, point now is say x bar y bar say we rotated it by an angle theta so that said we can write down x bar as d cosine now be careful it's not cosine theta it's cosine alpha plus theta because alpha plus theta is the angle that the green vector makes with the horizontal axis so this guy is alpha plus theta and y bar is the sine alpha plus theta right so now using famous trigonometric properties, we can write this as d cosine alpha cosine theta minus d sine alpha sine theta. Likewise, we can write y bar as d sine theta cosine alpha plus d cosine theta sine alpha. Now notice that d cosine alpha is x from here. d sine alpha is y. Here we've got a d with a cosine alpha, which is again x. And here we've got a d with a sine alpha, which is y. So we can write this as x cosine theta minus y sine theta. Likewise, we can write y bar as x sine theta plus y cosine theta. So we can say that the vector x bar y bar could be expressed here and right here. As a linear transformation from the 2 by 1 vector x, y onto the mapping or the 2 by 2 matrix cosine theta 
minus sine theta and the sine theta over here and the cosine theta right here. Now this matrix is really well known. It's, it's referred to as the Givens matrix. Now one might wonder, oh, so this is for a two-dimensional vector. Could, could this be done in higher dimensions, 3 by 3, 4 by 4, n by n? Well, yes. You can actually express higher rotations using simple elementary rotations. So from this 2 by 2 matrix, you can actually generate product of rotations composed of only this simple 2 by 2 matrix. So say I've got this shape over here, and I want to apply a rotation of, let's say, 30 degrees about the x-axis, okay? So my rotation axis is the x-axis. So doing that will give me the following. As you can see, the blue line is held fixed. So applying the given's rotation to any point on this blue line will return the same point, whereas the yellow line is rotated by an angle of 30 degrees. And same goes for the red line. Doing it again, and again and again you see that the blue line is insensitive to such a rotation right and here you go it's back where it was okay so that's a nice way to visualize givens rotation and if you're still not convinced well just lay down a simple example let's say you initially have a point let's say it is um i don't know point right here on the x-axis one zero and you were told to rotate it by an angle of 30 degrees what would you do so you'd want to compute x bar y bar as such what is my theta should be the angle you want to rotate by which is 30 degrees so back to this example over here we're rotating in three dimensions well how do we express this in terms of givens matrices right that's the question well first of all let's start visualizing what it means to rotate about an axis so again if we want to rotate about the x-axis by a certain theta, let's say 30 degrees, this is what we get. Now let's say we want to rotate about the y-axis, this is what we get. Notice that the line pointing towards the axis we're rotating about remains fixed. Last but not least, let's rotate about the z-axis, given that means that the, the yellow line, you see the vertical line, will remain fixed. And this is what you get. So if you keep doing that, so yeah, what's going on here and how could we express Givens matrices in higher dimensions, in three dimensions. Well, that's easy. Let's say about the 3D plane, and I want to start rotating about the x-axis with an angle of, let's say, 5. So my x-axis becomes as such. This is 5. How do we express that? Well, given the original point, x, y, z, that becomes upon rotation, x bar, y bar, z bar. Let's write down what x bar, y bar, and z bar are. Since we're rotating about the x axis, then x bar remains x. Okay, no transformation on x whatsoever. That said, the blue line that you see over here doesn't change, right? So if I rotate, it remains fixed. The only lines or the only axes that rotate are the y and z axes, right? So what is the equation that generates this rotation? Well, it's the same equations we had over here, right? The x cosine theta minus y sine theta, and x sine theta plus y cosine theta. So you get in this case, in terms of phi, y cosine phi, and the z sine phi, and the y sine phi plus z cosine phi, okay? Let's do the same thing about the y axis, well, since it's about the y-axis, that means y-bar will not change, so it's y. And likewise, x-bar and z-bar will be rotated using the same equation. We're going to denote this angle of rotation by something else. Let's say psi. So psi is rotating x, y, z to x-bar, y-bar, and z-bar. Okay, from here till here. x-bar is x cosine psi, z sine psi and x sine psi plus z cosine psi. Now let's rotate about the z axis. Likewise, z remains fixed. Let's say we're rotating by theta this time. So point x, y, z becomes x bar, y bar, z bar. We have the same equation. So how do we express those rotations in terms of matrices? Well, first about the x axis, we've got x bar, y bar, z bar is equal to a 
3 by 3 matrix multiplied by x, y, z. Now since it's about the x-axis, it means that the x component does not change. And the rest here is the Givens matrix. It is G of alpha. It is the Givens matrix that we discussed over here. So we're denoting this guy by a G of theta. A 2 by 2 matrix as such. About y, well, since it's about y, then y remains unchanged. So we've got a 1 on y and zeros elsewhere. Then over here, we've got the Givens matrix elements. That is cosine psi minus sine psi and a sine psi with a cosine psi, right? And now about z, well since it's about z, then z remains unchanged, so one on z and zeros elsewhere. And over here I've got a g of theta. So now given those three rotations, you can perform any rotation that you wish upon the in three-dimensional space. So you can go ahead, given a point x, y, z, you can go ahead and rotate it, Let's start about the x-axis, phi, to get x-bar, y-bar, z-bar. Then you can rotate about the y-axis with an angle of psi to get x-double-bar, y-double-bar, z-double-bar. Then about the z-axis with an angle of theta to get x-triple-bar, y-triple-bar, and z-triple-bar. So that said, the x-triple-bar, y-triple-bar, Z triple bar, the final point that is rotated about X, Y, Z could be expressed as if we denote this matrix by G of, I don't know, X, this matrix by G of Y, and this matrix by G of Z, then we get G, Z, G, Y, G, X multiplied by X, Y, Z, right? You can go ahead and expand this matrix. So multiplying three matrices, it's not going to look friendly. So laying them all next to each other, G, Z, G, Y, G, X, you get, so G of theta over here, and a 0, 0, 1, and a 0, 0. G, Y, cosine, psi, minus sine, psi, and a sine, psi with a cosine, psi, right? Then G, X, a 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and a G of right so with simple multiplications you're going to find out the following complicated expression now of course you're going to look at this matrix and freak out but it's okay it's not really important how you derive this matrix it's just to multiply those three matrices and you arrive at this somewhat complex matrix the important thing to keep in mind is that you can generate it from those three matrices so that you can rotate any point in 3d however you want just think about a rotation in 3D as three elementary rotations, rotating first about the Z axis, Y axis, then X axis. Now, a very important question here is the following. In previous lectures, we talked about commutativity of the product of matrices. That is, if you grab G, Z, G, Y, or G, Y, G, Z, is it going to give you the same thing? And in particular, I'm talking about this right here. We said that AB is in general not equal to BA. Well, it happens to be true in Givens matrices. Let's go back to the 2D case. So imagine I've got a point over here, right? Call it x naught, y naught on the x-axis. Then first I rotate by alpha and then by theta. So first by alpha, then by theta. So I'm, I'm basically looking at a linear transformation, g of alpha, then multiplying by g of theta. Well, let's say I did something a bit different. Let's say I rotated first by theta, and then by alpha. So I'm multiplying g alpha, then g theta. Wouldn't this be the equivalent of g theta plus alpha? And wouldn't this be the equivalent of the same thing, g alpha plus theta? Well, yes, it would. Because first, if you rotate by 30, let's say then by 20, it's a total of rotation by 50. And let's say you did it first by 30 and then by 20. Also, you're rotated by 50. So that means that givens matrices are commutative. You can first multiply g theta by g alpha or commute g alpha by g theta. Now that in general this is not true but it happens to be true for particular matrices. Remember when we talked about that? So AB in general is not equal to BA but it happens to be true for specific types of matrices. One of which is the Givens matrix. You can understand this geometrically or you can prove it using this simple equation. So you can commute alpha by 
theta and you arrive at the same formula. Now let's say I'm interested in translating a point. So I've got a point in space, x, y, and I want to translate it to somewhere, let's say, over here. So this guy is x plus tx and a y plus ty, okay? Just going from here till here. No rotation, just translation. So how do we express this in terms of matrices? First of all, this is also one type of linear transformation. So to express this in terms of matrices, I have to write this using a three-dimensional vector. So x, y, 1 is my original point. So imagine I'm at the plane z equal 1 and I'm working in that hyperplane. So the matrix responsible for translation is the following. 1, 0, Tx, 0, 1, Ty, and a 0, 0, 1. You get x plus Tx, y plus Ty, and a 1. So we're still in the z plane, and we're just moving x, x plus Tx, and y onto y plus Ty. You can now combine translations and rotations to perform any type of movement, right? Any type of movement in 2D, 3D, or even n dimensions. Okay, so this lecture covered pretty much a lot of stuff. We talked about what a linear transformation is, that is associating any matrix or to the so-called linear transformations. A specific type of function in which we grab a vector and simply perform a right multiplication onto the matrix. Then we talked about a specific type of linear transformation called the rotation. So we're rotating points in n dimensions. We can express any type of rotation, whether about the x, y, or z axes, or any type of axes you wish, through Gibbons matrix. That is the following matrix: cosine theta, minus sine theta, sine theta, and cosine theta. We did so. We used Gibbons matrix to go on to generalize rotations in three dimensions. That is rotating about x, y, and z axes through Gibbons matrix. We also saw intuitively or geometrically that given rotation matrices are commutative that is it doesn't matter if you start rotating by theta then by alpha or vice versa last but not least we saw how to translate a point from xy onto x plus tx and y plus ty through this type of product thanks for watching if you have any questions whatsoever please leave a comment down in the comment section below if you found the video beneficial please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much and I'll see you in future lectures.